Ah, here we go. So today we're going to be looking at this 1980 Honda CB650. Uh, this actually belongs to one of my colleagues. He dropped this off a little while ago, probably about a month ago now, but I just haven't had the time to look at it because I've been working on the Goldwing. Now that that's done, we're going to have a look at this beautiful old CB650 Custom. So I'm going to pull out a few of my bikes, pull this one into the garage, and talk about what we're going to be doing. So in the garage today, we've got this absolutely gorgeous 1980 Honda CB650 Custom. So as I mentioned, this belongs to a colleague of mine. Andy, thanks for trusting it with me. Uh, we've got a carb kit to do on the carbs. So I guess quick backstory. Andy's dad bought this bike new in 1980 from the local Honda Power Sports dealership. So it's been in his family since he was, uh, before he was born. Um, bike currently doesn't run, and he did charge the battery, so it tries, but it won't run. So we're gonna go through the whole uh, fuel, air, spark, compression, to check and make sure everything's working as we would expect it. Uh, so he provided a carb kit. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the carbs apart. We're going to clean those up, have a look, make sure everything's all good there. The carb kit comes with everything, replace all the new seals and whatnot in those carbs. So we'll do that. We'll check for spark. We'll check for compression. And once we have all those uh, things that we need to make uh, fire, we'll go ahead and we'll try to get this thing fired up. There's also a couple other things I want to do. Probably once we get it running, we'll take it for a quick run around the block, get the oil a good change. Uh, make sure we do all our other maintenance items. We'll get the chain lubed up. We'll check the, uh, the forks and the brakes and all that good stuff. And then make sure this baby's ready for the road for Andy. So, come along with me. Let's get this old girl back into running condition. So now the first thing I want to do is I want to remove these chrome protective covers from the airbox. There's one on either side, and that requires a Phillips screwdriver. And my Phillips screwdriver is currently in the back of my Goldwing because I rolled it up in a tool roll for the ride I went on yesterday that got rained out. So I'm going to go grab that, and I'll be right back, and we'll get these off. Now that I've got the guards off, I'm also just going to pop the side covers off. So I just want to make sure we can get at anything we'll need to get at electronic wise later as there's a main fuse here, a couple other connection points and whatnot. So we'll get those covered out of the way as well. And then we can look at getting those carbs separated from the airbox. So 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the throttle cable. So the throttle is a two throttle cable. It's like a throttle return and a throttle cable and a throttle return cable. See so one here and one here. So I'm going to go ahead and get those disconnected now as well. And then after that, the only thing we have left to disconnect cable wise is going to be the choke. If that's in fact currently connected, I'm not sure because I don't see it moving anywhere right now. But either way, we're going to continue moving forward. Now that I've got the intake and airbox boots all loosened off, this starts to turn into a bit of a struggle. So some people mention using a ratchet strap. So you'd run down around the bottom side here, come out the other side, go back around the back of the bike, and use a ratchet strap to kind of pull the airbox back away from the carbs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go away and wrestle with that. You can look it up, there's all kinds of forms like the CB650 form and whatnot where they talk about this as well. And I'll bring you guys back once I have these carbs off the bike and we're ready to actually start uh, tearing them down and get them ready to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. Just want to give you guys a little look at where I'm at so far. So I'll let a couple of the uh, harness clamps go so I can get in at things. And I got the, see in here, this is the throttle right here. I got those cables, the top and the bottom cable out. I also nailed them so I know where to put them when I put them back together. I'm gonna just mush those over here out of the way. Now that the throttle cables are off, you see the carb is more pliable now. So now my job is to get, finally, to get these carb boots off of the motor. And they're serving to be a bit of a pain in the balls. So I might put a bit of heat on them from a, a hair dryer or something like that, just to make them a bit more pliable. Either way, I'm gonna continue moving forward and when I get these off, we'll have a look at them on the bench. So here's the four pack carbs on this CB650 that we're working on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start taking this all apart. And what we're gonna do ultimately is rebuild all these. So like I said, here's the carb kit that Andy bought for this. We're gonna go ahead and strip these down, similar to how we did in the CB750 carb rebuild video. I'm not sure if I'm gonna record this in detail like I did with that one or maybe just for one of them. Uh, and maybe fast forward record the taking apart and putting them back together. But for more detail, this is essentially the same, you know, one with an accelerator pump, same way the throttle linkages, fuel pipes, blah, 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 blah. It's all pretty much the same on this as it is the, uh, the 750 carbs that we rebuilt. So I'll link that video in the description. I might have said that, I'll say it again. And in the interim, uh, I'm gonna lay out some paper towels in case any parts go trying to run away so we can see them easily. And we'll start getting this taken apart. So. Onward.
So I think that's enough fast forward for me for now. I'm going to turn the camera off, put on some music I like to listen to, and then, uh, well, more so than chill off, and then uh, finish stripping these down, get them all laid out. Then I can focus on getting the ultrasonic cleaner set up. We get each one of these stripped down, in through each one, one at a time. 20 minutes to a half hour piece, give it a good cleaning out. Then I'll bring you guys back when we're ready to start reassembling with the new uh, parts in the card kit that we've got here. I'm here taking uh, number one apart. I just want to show you guys what's uh, coming out of them. So I don't know if you'll see this or not, but it's not very good looking. It smells like you could stain a deck with it. Yeah, there's all kinds of grout and grawlies and shit in the bottom of that. So this thing is definitely in need of a good cleaning. By the way, I'll be back in a bit. I'm not exactly sure where I left off in the last bit of recording of this, but as you can see now, here is the carb body for carburetor number one. And you can see the difference in that and number two here. So you can see one is done and clean, two is completely rotten. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble number one, disassemble number two, get number two in the ultrasonic cleaner, and I'm gonna continue that process until I have all these done. So I'm probably not gonna bring you guys back now until I have all these reassembled. And just keep in mind, like I said before, this is something I've already done before on my channel, and I'll link to the video where I did that for a Honda CB754 pack, which is pretty much the same as these. And you can watch that video there in detail if you need any uh, further help or you want to have, see any details of how we're doing the, uh, the rebuild on these carburetors. Either way, back into it I go. So I can't remember what I last recorded, so I'm just gonna do it again. Um, all four carburetors are cleaned up <clears throat> and we're ready to reassemble the stack. So we're gonna go ahead, get the stack reassembled. Then we should be ready to do, do a couple things. One, we'll test for compression. Two, we'll test for spark. And then three, we'll put some gas in this thing and see if it'll fire up for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this back out of the way so I can put this stack together. I'll bring you back when it's together. As I mentioned before, if you want to see a four pack like this being rebuilt, there's a link to my other video where I did a set of CB750 carbs. That's pretty much exactly the same as these. You can check that out. Link will be in the description. Either way, I'll bring you guys back when this is all assembled. Now that the carb four pack is back together, uh, what I want to do next is check for compression and make sure that's good. And then we're also going to check for spark to make sure that's good. Once we got those two things figured out, uh, it'll be time to put some gas down through these carburetors and see if this old girl is going to fire. So I'm going to pull each of the plugs and we'll get the compression tester on it and see what compression is like in each of our cylinders. So if you don't have a compression tester, they are, I know some places like Napa Auto Parts and whatnot, some places in Canada, they have like a tool library, you can go check stuff out. So you might be able to get one there. Uh, and if not, you want to bomb one like I did. I mean, I think I got this one for less than 70 or 80 bucks. I can't remember exactly now, but they're relatively inexpensive. It might even, it might even have been cheaper than that. Either way, we're going to start off by taking out this plug here. So the plug is now out. Double check, make sure these usually come with a couple different size adapters. So this one would be bigger for like a larger spark plug. This is a smaller one. Double check and make sure in the threads, yeah, that's pretty much the same. They fit together. So we'll go ahead and we'll thread this into the spark plug hole. And once that's relatively snug, like so, we should be good. Now usually when you do compression tests, uh, what you'll end up doing is you'll end up holding the throttle wide open and that lets air come on through to test compression. But what I'm gonna do, since there's no carburetors on this, we should just be able to turn it over. So I'll flick the key on, make sure we're in the wrong position and we'll just hit the starter and we'll see, what, we'll see where the uh, pressure gauge kicks up to. Okay, we'll see what kind of compression we get here. So 
So there we go on this cylinder. We got to be at 125 PSI. I'll double check the manual. Uh, and the manual for this bike is in the description, or the link to is in the description. Feel free to go grab that. I'm thinking this is probably good. I'm going to go double check now and make sure, and we'll see uh, what the numbers say in the manual. So I just went ahead and did a bit of Googling quickly to uh, see what the numbers should be for this, and survey says it should be up around 160 or some such. Uh, down to 120 is, you know, good, but you're not going to get the performance that you're used to. So potentially we'll have to go in and do some valve adjustments. So we might have something where valves might be slightly open, or we also might have a situation where maybe rings are probably a little stuck because the bike hasn't run in a while. So actually what I think I'll do is if I get 120 plus on each of them, I'll just go ahead because I know the bike will at least run on that. And that way when the bike runs, things manage to free up a bit. We might see that come up a bit. And then after that point, we'll look at doing a valve adjustment to see if we can bring it up any further. So I'm going to go away, test these other three, and I'll write that down and we'll see uh, what kind of compression figures we had on each of these cylinders. I think the smart thing to do now while the plug is out is instead of putting this back in, go for the next one test and then come back checking all the spark later. I'm going to pop the plug in there. We're going to hold this against something steel and we'll see if we get any uh, sparks on that cylinder. So we'll run that plug. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my light. I'll bring you guys back, zoom in. We'll see if we see any sparkulation. Okay, here we go. Will we see spark? Let's keep an eye on that. Uh, you should be able to see it. Maybe we'll see. Lots of spark. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the rest as well. So compression spark testing on the other three cylinders. And we'll come back with our results written down. We'll see what we're going to do next after that. So I went ahead and did a compression test on number one side. Got 135 PSI. Also have a spark there. We did four. Four had 125 PSI. There was spark there. But 125 is a little low, so like I said, we'll keep an eye on that once the bikes been running for a while, see if you know rings uh, loosen up and things get back the way they should have been. Uh, couldn't get the spark plug out of two or three because I currently don't have a socket to fit down there uh, to get at the uh, the spark plugs. I had a 17 mil deep socket and I cut it up one time to make a tool out of it, so I don't have anything right now. So. Since one and four are good, I'm just going to make the assumption that two and three are decent. That might bite me in the ass. You'll find out soon enough, as will I. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead now and get the carburetors back on. And then we're going to look at getting some gas down through to see if this thing will pop off for us. So, that's a pain in the nuts to do. I'm not going to bother taping it. There's going to be a lot of cursing and swearing. But I'll bring you guys back once it's on, and we'll look at getting some gas into it to... Uh, Give a little pop, pop. See you once. At this point, we've got the carburetors reinstalled on the bike. I went ahead and charged up the battery overnight. Go ahead and put the battery back in, and we're going to see if this is going to run for us. So we're going to go ahead now, drop this battery back in, get it hooked up, and we'll go ahead and start cranking this thing over. Now, there's a cover on the airbox on this side over here, and I believe I can pull that off and get a few squirts of starter fluid in there if need be. So, I'm gonna go ahead, get the battery reinstalled. I'll bring you guys back and we're ready to start giving this a few tries to see if it's gonna start off for us. So I've got the filter into the airbox. We got unrestricted access now into the inside of the airbox. So I'm going to move this stuff over here out of the way. Here's our quick start. So I'm going to give her a couple shots of that and see if she'll pop for us. So key on, hit the starter, give us a few squirts. A little bit of a pop that time. shots and see if we can keep running. That is battery. 
as fuck, actually. <clears throat> so I'm going to give this one more try with the battery that's in it. I'm not confident it's going to work. Uh, and if it doesn't, I may take the battery to my gold wing just to give it a shot and see how that goes. Either way, let's see what we can get done here. something on the go this battery just doesn't want to work let's try a better battery so I went and picked up spark tester and managed to confirm the spark is on two and three as well my buddy John popped over come on in John hey guys this is a guy who prevents me from recording all the time I uh, popped over and I checked the firing order and the coils were connected incorrectly so on this side we go to one and four and on this side we go to two and three and those were mixed up. So we had one and three and two and four connected to each of the coils and that's no good. So now we got the following situation. So I went ahead and got all the air fuel mixture screws back to the standard 1.5 turns out and now things seem to be working decent. So I went ahead and I set all the air fuel mixture screws to the default one and a half. Things seem to run a bit better, but they're still a vacuum leak. And we tracked it down to the air chamber behind the carburetors is actually broken and it's open about 180 degrees around on this one here and the same on the other side. So now when it runs. It actually behaves. So I'm going to seal that up with RTV as best I can because they're going to be impossible to find. And we'll test it again tomorrow uh, when things are cured up. So I'll bring you guys back then. So, state of the union at this point. I got my battery from my gold wing taken off again. It will start and idles just fine. Maybe, no, I think the battery's toast now. There we go. So that battery is really weak and it needs to be replaced. So that's item one. Andy's aware of that and he's gonna pick up a new battery for it. The second thing is, at idle, this thing chugs along fine because it's not really drawing a ton of vacuum. Uh, when you give this throttle, it bogs instantaneously. And the reason is, the air chamber that connects the carbs to the air box has a few major breaks, and it's just losing vacuum nearly crazy. So there's a couple pictures that I took that I'll show you here somewhere. Excuse me, if you can see how that is just no good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab a rag with some naphtha. I'm gonna clean this up as best I can. I'm going to come back in with some silicone RTV. I'll open this up by hand. I'll stock that RTV in there as well as I can. We'll let it go back in. Do this on both sides. And I'll also give it a little slick outside to make sure that things are as sealed as we can get them. And then we'll give this 24 hours to cure. And we'll try it again. And hopefully then it will have proper throttle response. And then I'll consider this bike fit to be used. Uh, one of the other things... This wasn't running correctly earlier. Remember the first few times it popped off, just go, ooh, stop. 
the coils were connected to the wrong cylinders. So the coil on the left side was connected to one and three, and the one on the right side was connected to two and four. The one on the left side should go to one and four, and the one on the right side should go to two and three. So the last person to work on this bike had also hooked up the coils incorrectly. So I went out today on my lunch break, picked up the battery required for this bike, so there's a brand new battery in it, works fantastic. Uh, but before I get into any more with the bike running, uh, I want to do a couple things. One is we're going to adjust the cam chain tensioner to make sure our cam chain isn't too slack. And once that's done, then I'm going to do the valve adjustment. So on this CB650, the intake valves are adjusted to 2,000 clearance and the exhaust valves are adjusted to 3,000 clearance. So we're going to do that. You want the bike stone dead cold for doing that. And then I'm also going to double check the, uh, the spark gap on the, uh, the spark generator. Just to double check and make sure that that's set at the proper gap as well. Uh, this has electronic ignition. Uh, usually the gap doesn't have to be that dead on, but it doesn't hurt if it is. So those three things are what we're going to do. Cam chain tension, valve adjustment, spark gap adjustment. I will bring you guys back when I get the camera over here to show you where that tensioner bolt is, cam chain tensioner adjustment bolt is, and show you how we go ahead and adjust that. Right there, that little rusty nut on the back of the cylinders, that there is your cam chain tensioner adjustment. So what you do is you loosen this off ever so slightly, like enough to, so that the the adjuster will let allow or it'll allow the adjuster to take up the slack or whatever. Uh, when that is adjusted and loosened out, you then have the cover off. Oops, this will turn right here where the spark generator is, and you just turn the motor over four or five times clockwise while slowly tightening that nut in there back in and that should set the tension correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up and we'll do that now. So once we remove this cover, two 8mm bolts here, this hex nut here, the spacer or whatever, is a 24mm and you'll want to spin that clockwise once we loosen this 10mm bolt in here off. So I've got my small 10mm, I'm going to go in there and just Crack that ever so slightly loose. You don't take it off, you just loosen it up. And we also start to loosen up a bit. That's about a quarter turn, it's about a half turn. Let me give it a tiny touch more. Okay, that feels good there. So I'm just going to rotate the engine. And what this does is it allows the automatic tensioning mechanism to draw or push out or whatever, and that puts force on one side of the chain and then that'll cause the chain to tighten up again. So I'm just going to go ahead and start rotating the motor clockwise. Now while I'm rotating that, I'm going to start tightening this nut back up. I'm going to get my uh, gear wrench with the uh, ratcheting head on that. That should make that a bit more easier as I'm tightening it up. Real gear inch tightening and put that on there. And we'll slowly start tightening that in as we rotate the motor around. Okay, now that's tight. Here we go. Now the next thing I'm going to do is get these valve covers off. So cylinders one over here on the left side of the bike and four here have two, I think they're four mil Allen keys or Allen, uh, Allen headed bolts to hold them in. And number two and three are held on by a 10 mil bolt 
two 10 mil bolts, one other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this off now. I'll have a look down into the top of the valve assembly and we'll talk about making those adjustments. So there we are with the valve uh, covers removed. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put my 24 mil wrench back on that nut we had on before when we were turning the engine over. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna watch the rocker arms as they gum up and go down. So right now I can see that intake on number one is open because the lobe on the cam has that pushed up. So if I put my wrench on here, I rotate this, I see, okay, it brings it all the way up top and it's open. So now I know we're on intake, let that go down. Now I can feel a little bit of play on the exhaust side, and absolutely none on the intake side. So I know my intake on this side is way too tight. There should be two valve clearance and there is literally zero. It's bar tight. And then the exhaust side, like you can shimmy it up in every finger, you can just feel it moving. So I'm gonna go ahead now I'll bring you guys over to this side of the bike. We'll quickly do the intake and exhaust on number one, two through four is the same process, but you'll get the idea. So I'll bring the camera around and we'll do this quick. So I'm just quickly gonna go ahead and rotate that motor again using my socket that I laid down. I was having trouble finding. So if we watch, intake just happened on this side, we just spoke about it. So it was this rocker arm here pushing this valve down. I come back here now and click on this again. You'll see there's a lobe coming up down there. It's now pushing the intake rocker going up. Or sorry, the exhaust rocker. It's going up, pushing the exhaust valve down into the cylinder. And now that cylinder's done. We see intake now coming up. Intake is all the way up. Intake is going back down. And now we're in a neutral point for cylinder one because we can see both lobes are all the way pointing down into uh, the, the head there, down toward the head. So now we can look at, I don't know if you hear that little ticking noise, but that's the lash or clearance on the exhaust side. If I try the same on the intake side, there's literally none there at all. It doesn't move. Once again, a bit of ticking there. No ticking here. There's a tiny, tiny little bit there, but it's not anywhere near what it should be. So, I'm gonna go ahead now and grab a 10 mil socket and a what's going to be a small flathead screwdriver and I'll show you how I'm going to set this up so I can loosen those lock nuts off, adjust the tappets and then tighten the lock nuts back on. So here's the setup tool wise regarding doing these adjustments. I've got a 10 mil deep socket which is needed to loosen off the lock nut this here. I just got that grabbed with a set of vice grips so I can twist that open or loosen that up, adjust my adjuster. The adjuster can be adjusted with a small flat top screwdriver like this. So what will happen is I'll put this down through here. Lay down my... I'll put this down here and make sure I can get into that flat head adjuster and then I can put this on the lock nut there so I can break that loose, make my adjustment, tighten it up again, come back in then we'll check what our feeler gauges. So like I said, exhaust side, three thou, once that's adjusted properly, this fourth out feeler should not go in there. Same goes for the intake side. Once that's adjusted to two thou, the three thou feeler should not go in there. So I'm gonna go ahead now and make those adjustments and I'll bring you guys back to show you what the clearances are like once we're done.
So that's the exhaust side adjusted to our three thou. So the feeler gauge goes through. We work it through, just give it a little wiggle, it goes. Four thou does not go. So now we know that that is properly adjusted to the three thou. We'll do the same thing on the back for two thou for the intake. And then we'll move on and do the rest of the cylinders. That's the adjustment now done for both the intake and the exhaust side valves on uh, cylinder one. So we'll just go back and double check now. Intake supposed to be two thou. So we'll get our two thou feeler. And we can see that we can slip it in under that rocker arm between the rocker arm and the can. And the three thou will not go through there. So that shows it is set to two and not more. And then the same thing goes for the exhaust side. We've got that one set to three so we can slip our three in under there and it's just a little snug as we go in and our four will not go so now i'm going to do the same for the last three cylinders and then i'll bring you guys back and we're going to look at the uh spark advancer and the uh the spark uh, gap there on the right hand side so the last quick thing i want to do is just double check the clearances here so i've turned the crank around set the lobe on the crankshaft here and the hall effects that are here line up. So the clearance on these should be anywhere between 12 and 16 thou. So if I check, let me see, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 are out. So if I go, we'll start in the middle of the road, we'll start at 14. Just about to go. And 12, 12 goes. So it's good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this 180 degrees now so that that lobe is next to the sensor on the other side. So you can see our little point right here. Bring that around. Twelve to start again, and the twelve is just a little tight there. So I'm going to loosen that screw ever so slightly. There are two screws loosened, so there's one here, there's one here. So I'll loosen the screw ever so slightly, and this one down here ever so slightly. Now I'll slip my 12 in there. Couple of light taps here. And go in with that 12 again. Still no go. Okay, loosen this off a bit more. It just starts to slip out then, so I'm going to move my 12. 12 goes, I'll push this over so it's tight against the 12. And I'll tighten that screw back up. That's that one there. One down the bottom. Come back to my 12 again. And now we got a 12 gap there. So now 12 is good there, and 12 is good on the other side. So at this point now, I'm going to put this cover back on. We're going to fire this baby up and see how it runs. Okay, hopefully the beeping tractors in the background aren't too loud. But just finished doing 
our valve adjustments, our cam chain tensioner adjustment, and the spark gap clearance adjustment. Everything's buttoned back up. Our new battery's in. Go ahead and flick the bike to the run position. Key on. Full choke. Let it warm up for a bit. So I had the bike running for a brief moment and it was, it was kind of running a bit shitty still. So at this point I think I found the culprit here. Here is the last boot that I've yet, or cable and boot that I've yet to reassemble. So if I take each of these, I'm going to the spark plug side over here, I'm going to the cable side here, I'll see roughly 5 kilo ohm resistance. So there's 5 kilo ohm on that one. Put it over there. This cable here, same thing. Go into here, go into here. Roughly 5 kilo ohm, 4.3. I'm not sure what kind of tolerance or accuracy these are supposed to have, but the third one here, roughly 5 kilo ohm as well. Now, this last wire, if I just go to continuity mode, I see I have continuity there. If I come into my wire itself, I can feel it engaging the wire there. I get continuity through my wire, so it's that part good as well. We'll go back to resistance. See, so touch this to two itself. Just dick all there. If I go into the five kilo ohm boot, this is showing me like, 10 mag, 9 mag. So it tells me there's something seriously wrong with this uh, with this boot. So if I give it a few whacks there, come back at it now, I see I'm getting zero through it. So this has been the culprit all along. Even though things were hooked up incorrectly, and I fixed that by hooking them up in the right order, there's still an issue because this one resistive boot is not working correctly. So I'm going to touch base with Andy now. I'm going to give up for the evening, put the bikes away and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to touch base with Andy, let him know, even though three out of four of these are working, because that one is not working, I think it's just as well we replace all these. So I'm going to touch base with Andy tonight, we'll make sure that he's okay with the added cost of that, because it might be another 30 or 40 or 50 bucks, whatever it is, I'll check with the Honda dealership tomorrow. I'm going to get all new boots, and we're going to go ahead and rewire the ignition system, or the spark system. For this uh, for this bike so that way everything coming into the coils is getting to the cylinders as expected so now that we know that we have an issue with one of those boots I went ahead and ordered and yesterday picked up a whole new set of those NGK plug boots so here they are XD05FP, which is the same ones that are on the bike currently. So we got all new plug boots. So I'm just going to run a tester over each of these and make sure we get our 5K on them all. So, let's crack it for these and have a quick look. Nice, so it comes with all the boots and stuff as well, which is really nice. So I'll put all those aside over here. See the connection points inside here. This is on resistance currently, so I'll put this here, put this on the other side. 5.7k. One. And obviously these should be good, they're brand new. But uh, we check these things anyways just in case. 5.2k. Five K on the nose, and lastly, five 
5.4, 5.5K. So I tested out all the wires, the original wires. These seem fine. Uh, I get the actual reading. So this is the new boot on the wire for cylinder one. If I go into here on one side and contact the wire, and I come in here and contact the con contactor to connect to the plug there, I still get my 5K. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse the old wires because they're all good. Get the new boots on, and we'll get this all hooked up and fire the bike up. So I'll bring you guys back in a bit. So I went and checked, because this was still running a bit funny, and what I think happened was when one of the plug boots went, the resistance went way, way up, and I think it ended up killing spark plugs. So I went and bought four new spark plugs, and I just finished putting them in the bike. I'm getting ready to put the tank and the uh, seat on now so I can take it for a run, but this is the situation. Key on. Plugs like a champ. Response throttle. So, I'm going to get the tank and stuff put on this bike, and we're going to go for a quick ride. Tank and seat are back on. Just need to pop the side covers on here. Over here. Like so. And this one here. Put the airbox on things. Now once again, just quickly, key on, bit of choke, push it out. I'm running good, so I'm going to pop my helmet on, pop my gloves on. Take this for a run. I'm going to stick my phone in the tripod and just get some footage of me going open down the road on this. Then I'll bring you guys back and we'll talk about what we did and uh, whatever. So here we are, fresh back from our quick run around the block. Bike seems to be running fantastic. Once again, just to reiterate, key on, one switch is on. As easy as that. So, to recap, what we did on this bike was, rebuilt the carburetors, got those reinstalled, 
fix some air leaks on the air chamber behind the carburetor with some RTV. Then we discovered we had spark issues, namely one surrounding one of the boots. They are the NGK XD50 DEF or something like that. Um, got all new ones of those, put those on, still had an issue. Tested the plugs, two out of four of the plugs were toast. So my thought is that one of those boots being gone and throwing like 20 and 30 meg ohm as opposed to 5k just ended up killing a couple plugs that were on that uh, on that coil as well. Uh, so all the plugs were replaced. We built the plug wires with the new boots, and now as you can see, this thing is running fantastically. So Andy, there's your bike. Hopefully, it serves you for. The rest of your life now, it would be a fantastic thing to ride around on. Me whipping up and down the road on this that time was fantastic. It was really, really nice. Uh, and all I had to do since I got back was I just adjusted the back brake pedal a bit because it was a bit loose. Either way, I want to thank all you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.